Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Fear the Queer. A show that talks about everything on our queer agendas. I'm Kyle. I'm Josh. And this is Chromatica. <laughs> <laughs> you named your skull Chromatica? I couldn't think of a, a better fitting title. For Chromatica? I, w- I, I was thinking, like, D- Dahlia... <laughs> <laughs> Dahlia Sin. Dolly, Dahlia Sin. Uh, Dolly, like, oh, Black oh, Dahlia. should, should, okay, so you and your skull, how's right. your head? Lots and lots of complaints. So the reason why I'm holding this skull is because today on our episode, we're going to be talking about queer tragedies in the sense of my like, dating life. Yeah, <laughs> in the sense of Kyle dating queer. life. But also in the fact that a lot of American LGBTQ plus films tend to focus on characters with a sense of tragedy toward them. So like all great Shakespearean plays, we must have a skull present. All right, but before we get into the heart of our queer agenda, Kyle, what are we drinking today? Well, you know me, I love my bubbly soda stream. Uh, actually a soda stream with bubbly flavors, but I'm taking a break from it because the last time I tried to drink it, it was flat and, um, I felt wronged by it. Uh, Mm -hmm. so this time I'm going back to the basics and drinking a Trenta sized iced coffee. Uh, oh, but here's the thing too. I'm almost out of this one. Mm. Mm -hmm. Have no fear. I got another one. Of course you do. (laughs) Stick a well, cause you need to have, I, I gotta be energized. It's, I mean, you gotta be energized for the pod. Um, and, uh, oh, there goes the microphone. Uh, oh, there so, goes my water bottle. Oh, we drink a new water bottle. <sighs> All right. Do you feel well, refreshed? Oh, I do. I forgot. Cheers, queer. Cheers, queers. You're like, <laughs> cheers, queer. Just queer the single person. That's yeah, just you. Honestly. <laughs> anyway. For today's opening segment, we are going to do he another. Said it. Right, we're going to do another segment of "Can You Keep Up," in which we're going to be talking about the hot topics of this week, and we're going to just have a little rant about them. Kyle, what do you, what do you say? Should we get into it? If you know one thing about me, it's that I love to rant and rave. Mm, 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 mm. Get me my rave whistle. All right. All right, so first thing on our Can You Keep Up agenda is the Mm -hmm. 93rd Oscars and our thoughts about it. Mm, Girl, so the Oscars were this past Sunday. Uh Uh-huh. And, um, you know, this past year has been really different, obviously, because uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic and Mm -hmm. um, things are just always going to be probably different from here on out for the next few years. that being said, I will say, I went into the Oscars, I made myself some pizza rolls, some mozzarella sticks, and I was like, we're gonna have a good Oscars. Sat down, uh, and and you know what? I was right for the most part, because Regina, most part rather, because Regina King mm-hmm. opened them, and we uh, love Regina King here. And I mean, and if you don't love Regina King, are you even an American? Yeah, I was gonna say. That's, I, I mean, that's not country. a question. Yeah, you don't like Regina King, then you don't get to listen to these queens. Um, But so she opened and obviously everything's like social distance for those of you who did not watch. Mm -hmm. Um, And for the most part, I agreed with most of the winners, Um, but it was like a little bit boring. But I just think that's how the Oscars are kind of how it is now. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we got to the end. Yeah. So and um Josh, how about you fill fill people in on what happened at the end if they are living under a rock? Right. So um, like Kyle said, the ceremony was pretty normal for the most part. They cut all the best original song performances, which actually, in my opinion, helps keep the Oscars moving along. So I'm not really sure why they decided mm-hmm. to cut that. Um, and it was uh, very much like paint by the numbers night for the most part, like the people who you thought were going to win, like one, they made lovely speeches. I thought how they handled 
like the social distancing guidelines actually worked pretty well in their favor. Um, it was a nice change for once, but about near the end of the um, Oscars, they presented best picture um, without giving out best actress and best actor. And I remember texting Kyle mm. be like, wait, did I miss this? I was like, wait. Did, Felt oh, like we shit. missed something. I was like, oh shit, I for what's happening with the boards? They gave out the best picture award to Nomadland, which was expected. And we were just like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. And they're just like, oh, duh. They're going to wait for best actor till the very end because that's going to be Chadwick's win. And it's going to be a great ending to the ceremony of like, you know, his legacy. And we just so, talked about that a few episodes ago, how we were like, oh yeah, Chadwick's going to win. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it to lose. Yeah. seemed kind of like a sure bet. It was kind of one of those things where even if the Oscars hadn't said it, like Chadwick will win. All answers pointed to like, oh, duh. Like, right. That's like, what all the media outlets were saying, all right. the reviewers. There were like gift baskets that were handed out at the ceremony that honored Chadwick Boseman. He was the last person on the In Memoriam. You know, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom mm -hmm. got a lot of like the makeup artists and the wardrobe people got awards for it. So it's kind of like building yeah. up to like this nice mm -hmm. ending here. So yeah. first we had Best Actress in which Frances McDormand won. She is now a three-time Best Actress winner. The only person who has surpassed her is Katherine Hepburn. Um, so there was the first shock of that's, the night, really. That's kind of bonkers to me. Yeah. I wasn't expecting her to win. And I, I, I don't dislike Frances McDermott. My favorite moment was when Regina King was like, just in the movies, we put the masks on when we're not filming and we take the masks off when we are. And they cut to Frances McDermott with her mask still on, hair disheveled, looking so exhausted. <laughs> that's how I felt. That's how I felt. Francis, I was like very. Yeah, she was just like sitting there, like. Mm. <laughs> just like, yeah, um, yeah. So, but her winning, it was a little bit shocking because I thought it was going to go to maybe Carrie Mulligan or maybe uh, Viola, Viola Davis. Davis or yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, okay, I, okay. Now, a lot of people have said that they probably split their votes because a lot of people were expecting either one of them to win, and then Francis oh, kind of like went through. Kind of also, snuck in. yeah. Also. Um, Viola Davis's Ma Rainey's Black Bottom did not get nominated for Best Picture. And apparently, unless you like have like a front runner status where you clearly have won every single award, it was probably hard for mm -hmm. her to win Best Actress because not a lot of people mm -hmm. were behind that movie. So, so be it. But then, no pun intended, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, not many people were behind. behind. Behind her. Ooh, that's a good catch. I like that. Ooh, booty. Mm. Yeah. But then we get to Best Actor, and, right. you know, we just were a little surprised by Frances McDormand winning. We're just like, oh, okay. And we're just like, well, it, okay. It, it, it was like, I was like, huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, you weren't, like, mad by it, but you're just like, oh, you know? It'd be like- I felt bad for Carrie. Like, when Carrie Mulligan, she definitely dressed like an Oscar in that big gold dress, which I liked. I thought it was so pretty. And mm -hmm. then they're like, Frances McDermott. And she's like, huh? <laughs> I know. She like just huh? had her head down on the table. Just like, <gasps> huh? <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. And then. It was um, weird. Yeah. And then we get the best actor. Anthony Hopkins actually isn't there because apparently he, you sent this to me that yeah. he was going to try to. Or be at the ceremony through zoom because he's an 83 year old living in britain like i don't think it's really safe for him to travel to america right now certainly um and the apparently through what kyle sent me is that they uh they didn't want him to do that they refused to allow him to do that which is weird because they allowed broadcasts all throughout the world for all these other people i'm not sure why they didn't do it for anthony hopkins so yeah. then walking phoenix was, comes out on that, stage that that also, sorry, that that bothered me because it was like, <laughs> as much as I was like, oh, Chadwick Boseman is going to win this, it was weird to have acclaimed actor, Sir Anthony Hopkins, not like, yeah, why why don't you have like a camera? Even if he was in his like library or something, you're not going to have him. Sorry. Right. I was going to say, like, I was like, he's like a legend at this point. I was just like, you're not going to give him a courtesy of this. Um so anyway, Walking Phoenix walks out on stage and was like, <laughs> "Best actor goes to Anthony Hopkins." 
and like I think everyone's jaws at that point were just like oh like oh what? I texted you and I and, and it was like what just happened yeah and because Anthony Hopkins wasn't allowed to be present at the Oscars unless he actually showed up he wasn't there to accept the award and so what just Fe- ended yeah so walking Fears is like well he's not here so I uh I accepted on his behalf walks off stage and that's the end of the show they're just like what <laughs> So anti, I, it, it, like, the Oscars this year was, like, and maybe I'm just, like, a little bit horny, but it was, like, <laughs> having sex with someone, and you're, like, I don't really want to have sex with them, like, but I'm going to because, like, I'm horny, and then you start having sex with them, and, like, it ends up being surprisingly good, mm-hmm. and you're, like, going, and it's, like, good and good, and then you both stop right before you're about to come, and then it's, like, all right, I'll call you a lift. That's how it felt. And I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this now? Right. I got blue balls. I got blue right. balls from the Oscars. Right. And it's just, it's so awkward too, because it's like the Academy directors clearly like wanted Chadwick to win. They were going to bet on Chadwick winning. They were going to have it be the end of the night. So that way everyone will talk about it the next day. And then nothing happened. Nothing. And yeah. wasn't Chadwick Boseman's family there? They were there. They were all dressed up and ready to like- I would be so mad. Right. <sighs> and it's just, and it's so sad because it's like, they clearly exploited his death for views and ratings. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know, you would think, of th- I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Anthony Hopkins. I thought his performance in The Father was phenomenal. I- he even recorded a video and sent it in the next day, paying tribute to Chadwick Boseman, being like, I'm so sorry that I couldn't be there. I want to pay tribute to Chadwick Boseman. This just goes to show that whoever is running the Academy Awards just does not get it. <laughs> it just, it's like, can you keep up? Can you keep up Academy Awards? Like, it mm-hmm. was confusing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I was confused. Um. I, I was, uh, yeah, that, that, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, Chadwick Boseman didn't win. Bullshittery. I smell a stunt. I mm-hmm. smell a stunt. You don't have Chadwick Boseman win, and then you don't allow Anthony Hopkins to make a speech the night of? Right. Stunnery. Mm-hmm. I don't, not, not in, not in 2021. We are not doing this anymore. No. You got to keep it real. You got to be genuine because I am not, I am not the one for you to piss off sitting on my couch at 10 30 at night central standard time uh-uh i was gonna say kyle's tweet twitter is just gonna be blowing up left or right with all this commentary i got commentary speaking of commentary can we talk about halle berry's bangs <laughs> yeah. bad bangs on ba- bad bad bangs on good women that was um wild to me for halle berry who is gorgeous love halle berry right. um a leo queen for her to I'm sorry, she's a Leo and she allowed herself out. to look like that. <laughs> she might have been under the uh impression that it made her look edgy. Sure. I have a theory. I have a theory. She was, oh my God. Oh my god. Halle Are Berry. You... <laughs> Halle Berry. I was actually going for like Gen Z, like um, like K pop wannabe. Yeah. I don't hate it, Josh. Your hair kind <laughs> of looks good parted down the middle. Oh, thanks. It's a it's a vibe. It's as a vibe. It's say. a mood. Yeah. It's a, it's it's a vibe. Don't cancel me, sis. Go off. Um, but Halle Berry coming out with the baby bangs, I was like, what is this? It's like it, very much the energy of I was bored at three a.m. I gotta do something with my hair. Right. And then I'm pretty sure it was a wig. I hope for her sake it was. I a hope wig. for her sake, yeah. <laughs> but like, why that wig? Does she need me to link her up to some good wigs on online? Because like it was just it was giving me energy of when Beyonce <laughs> wigs for queens. Yeah, it was giving me the energy of when um Beyonce had the baby bangs in Paris, France. Mm-hmm. Like like they're like Beyonce, are you happy to be in Paris? Are you happy to be in Paris? And she's like snip 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 snip. It was so she's bad. like I love it. <laughs> it's so confusing to me, and I'm just like. Yeah, when bad bangs happen to good women. Um, so that that was something I took away from it. But the highlight, do you, do you have a highlight of, of the Oscars? I mean, can we just say it? Glenn Close. Yeah. yeah. Doing Glenn the butt dance. Glenn won for me. 
Yeah. Do I also am can I just say this? It? Exploitation. Yeah. You don't give this woman a goddamn Oscar, but she's gladly like doing the butt dance for you guys on stage. Buffoonery. She was, she was, oh, oh, yeah. There it was rigamorous. Um, it truly like I loved seeing that like Glenn Close, like Andre Day, and uh Daniel Kaluuya. Mm-hmm. who happy he won so happy he won oh totally. that was a great speech that was a great moment um but having them be like I, I, and, and get the music wrong like the music questions wrong and then have glenn close get up and like do the butt but also she knew all the like names and everything whether that was rehearsed or not i enjoyed it and it was the best part of the whole ceremony Oh, yeah. Um, well, it's funny, too, because uh, they're just like, oh, you know, you probably won't know this. And she's like, oh, hold on. She's like, it's from a Spike Lee movie, you know, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. Like, I knew these people. And then he's like, do you know the dance? She's like, of course I know the dance. <laughs> and she got him a star dance. It was like, it was very like the energy when I get back in, in the clubs, how I'm going to be dancing. Mm-hmm. Just exactly. like trying to throw it back, but also like breaking my back. Right. I know. No, it was a yeah. great... It, that was a great moment. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people agreed with us, though, because this has been the lowest rating Oscars in history. Kind of expected that to begin with, but uh, it only yeah. clocked in 10.4 million people watching. Damn. Yeah, which at one point, like the Oscars could rank up to almost 40 million people watching the show. That's wild. And, it, yeah. I think people are just like over it. Plus, I don't think people saw things this year. People didn't see shit this year. So it's just like, ah. You know, they were too busy trying to stay alive. Like Exactly. Speaking of staying alive, we have another Can You Keep Up for you really quickly. And that on Tuesday, the CDC actually announced that fully vaccinated people can now go outdoors maskless and it should be fine if you're in small gatherings. Um, actually, right. I'll just give you more details here. They said you can be indoors with other fully vaccinated people. You can be outside in small groups. If you are outside with a large group, I think you still have to wear a mask. And then if you are at a restaurant with outdoor dining, you don't have to wear a mask the entire time. And so I don't know how to feel about that. That's because right now we're in um... the we're right now we're in the peak of allergy season so for me I'm gonna keep it on just because like I haven't had a cold yet and I don't want to have one now (laughs) I I I have some feelings yeah the first one is CDC you need to give me a warning because I am fully vaccinated I'm like all good right right I'm not ready to take off the mask I feel very Valentina I'd like to keep it on please I don't want the world to see what's underneath just yet I feel like this this is my safe haven now Right. You just see my eyes. It's you don't get to see the rest blanket. of it. You ready? Yeah, it's a security <laughs> blanket. Oh, God. But um, so not ready to walk around. And that and 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 that being said, when I heard about this, I was like, oh, I guess I could like go for a walk without my mask on. Because like obviously I've seen other people. Well, other people have been walking out with their out their masks on this whole time. Um, but in my head, I'm like, oh no. If they see me with my mask on, are they going to be like, wow, they're not vaccinated yet. And I'm like, no, I am vaccinated. But like, I just don't want to show the bottom half of my face just yet. I'm working on things. Well, I just I just found out that my gym is open again. Yeah. So I, I uh, or open 24 hours. Hey, Planet Fitness, sponsor me. Well, there's also going to be like situations too, where people who prefer to keep their masks on are going to look at you with your mask off, walking around and being like, "Mm, like, I'm not comfortable around you, which, right. You know, I mean, I'm not blaming them for that, but at the same time, it's like sending mixed signals. It's like, like, what, what do you do? I can't, I mean, I, I thrive on uh, getting mixed signals. Ask any of my exes. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, this is very much like, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm very much a free to be you and me, do whatever you want, as long as you're not hurting others. So in theory, if we're allowed to walk around without our masks on outside, if we're fully vaccinated, Mm -hmm. then that should be fine. I still am thrown though, because I'm like, but so many people were already doing that, that I'm like, are they just going to just keep not doing that if they're not vaccinated? Like, I'm less worried about the people who are vaccinated walking around without their masks on than I am about the people who are, like, hacking up a loogie 
and like we're wearing masks the, this entire time like I'm right. like those people will just be like see I don't have to wear my mask yeah I I will say that I went to the lake yesterday um and just like hung out uh which got me some color but only on one side of my head which um hello I love the color red but I am kind of blending into the background now um because I am the color of Jigglypuff we love um, the blended queen <laughs> We love a blended queen, uh, but it was just so nice to sit outside, not have my mask on by the water and just like smell air and grass. Like what a weird thing. I never thought that when like, this mm, pandemic started. Switch. Oh, I was like, oh God, the smell of dead bodies floating in the Chicago lake. Oh God. No, I, um, I never thought I would miss being able to just be outside and smell air. And just like sit in grass and like just be. Um, so definitely got not going to take that for advantage uh, anymore ever again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't wait to, to, I'm still waiting to dance and twirl with everyone. I, oh my God, I'm going to, do you ever, I, I think I'm going to cry the first night out. Um, I know for a fact that I'm going to be watching you and good friend of the pod, Jill, cry on our first night out. <laughs> oh, we are such dramatic queens. Like, we are full on going to be like, like, if I, I'm going to cry now. If they start playing, like, dance, dance into the world ends, uh, it, it, I'm going to be like, if you feel it, let it happen. Keep on dancing to the world. And now to get to the heart of our queer agenda today, we are going to be talking about why do American LGBTQ films always have such a tragic background to it? And we're then going to be giving a list of you guys, a list of you guys, a list for you guys. Of we're the all- FBI. We got all of your information. <laughs> I was like, we doxed every single one of our four listeners. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Watch out, no, mom. We're, we're going to give you a list of all the movies that you can watch that have more of a happy feeling to them because we all believe that queer movies should have some joy to them. But yeah, let's get to talking about these tragedies. Yeah. Because I feel like every single, well, not every single film, because we, we got a few that aren't, but most gay or like queer films mm-hmm. are so tragic. They're so sad. Yeah. Like it's either a lesbian period piece where they both die at the end or you know it's like Brokeback Mountain where one of them gets killed or it's like you know a single man where he just has a heart attack at the end of it it's just there's or a lot call me by your name um, where he just stares into the fireplace being like I'm in love with a cannibal or or, <laughs> or oh or um or uh blues the warmest color that also does not end well. Did you ever see that? Because they realize that blue is actually not the warmest color. But uh, no, well, have you seen blue is the warmest color? Mm-mm. It is like three million hours long. It is a French film. It has Lea Sadu and another girl. And she Lesbian is number like, two. <laughs> lesbian number two, right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I forget, the director's like some straight guy. And you can tell because there's like a really obnoxious scissoring scene. Um, but I, uh, he just, yeah. Um, no, he's either Martha Stewart. We're not talking about those kind of scissorings, uh, <laughs> but it, it ends badly too. Mm-hmm. It's a sad ending too. Yeah. Did you know that there's actually tropes for these movies? There's two of them. It's called, one is called bury your gay. And the second one is called sudden gay man death syndrome. <laughs> I've heard of the sudden gay man death syndrome because that is what like the, a single man is. Right. Like you're just it's like, like oh, you're he's never going Daniel. to be happy. So it's just yeah. like, boom, dead. Yeah. Right. Now that to be, to be fair, there are films that are tragic that I do enjoy like a single man. Um, Brokeback Mountain. Boys don't cry. Yeah. But the reason why we're talking about this and why it ties into the Academy Awards is that a lot of American LGBTQ based films that get recognition from the Academy always tend to be like tragic. And you have movies like Jared Leto playing a transgender woman. Um, 
and Dallas Buyers Club, who Byers. ends up dying, who gets awarded for that. Um, you get, you know, Brokeback Mountain, who was hyped to win Best Picture, but they gave it to Crash and said, there's just so many, like, Boy Erased two years ago. Do you remember that movie with Nicole Kidman and Joel Oof. Edgerton? Can yeah. I just say, like, Boy Erased was a mixture of, it was just, like, religious trauma. I hated it. I hated Boy Erased. Right. I was so just like, this much. is not a movie that you market to queers. Like, <laughs> It's not. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like sometimes a lot of these movies that are, have a lot of like queer themes in them are not meant for the LGBTQ community. They're meant for like straight people to feel bad for us. Right. And, I, and I'm like, sometimes you don't need to see that. Like, I don't need to see someone struggling with their sexuality who's being forced to go to like a Christian camp or someone who has to like remain in the closet um, mm -hmm. And like all these things, uh, you know, or, oh, someone who re remains in the closet, but then the other person goes off and has like a happy life. Like there's just so many or someone dies, like just out of the blue. And it's piano like, falls from the sky and just hits them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Looney Tunes. Gay right, tragedy. Yeah. <laughs> gay tragedies. Uh, yeah. Um, but I, I just think that like sometimes straight people will be like, oh, my God, it is so good. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I'll see it. I'm like, yeah, that was not good. So, that was upsetting. So really quick story with Boy Erased. Um, I was working at the bar that we worked at together at the time and we were showing Boy Erased. And the straight couple comes up. They're around our age. They uh, order drinks and they're like, oh, have you seen Boy Erased? That's what we're seeing tonight. I was just like, I did. And they're like, what'd you think? I was like, in all honesty, like it just... Uh, I wasn't really into it. And all I said very briefly, because, you know, you're just chit-chatting. You're just like, eh, it just kind of yeah. hit too close to home. Meaning what you're talking about. Like, it just wasn't marketing for someone like me. So right. the straight guy hears that. And then he just turns to me and he goes, man, I am so sorry that that happened to you. And I'm just like, sir. <laughs> it's like, straight. I, I feel like, and I think that, that that's kind of Hollywood's issue is like straight people think that every kind of tragic queer trope has happened to every queer person mm -hmm. um which is not always the case believe it or not even though I went to a Lutheran school uh, I did not have the severe religious trauma that boy erased had do I right. have religious trauma of course I do um right. it's 2021 who doesn't but right. uh, just because I grew up in the country does not mean that I fell in love with a cowboy who ended up getting killed. Unfortunately, it just did not happen to me. <laughs> not just killed, hate crimed. Hate crimed, yeah. Hate crimed. <laughs> that uh, Brokeback Mountain is one of those movies that, like, I like Brokeback Mountain. I think it's so, it, it is, it is good. I should rewatch it. It's been like a couple years. But my God, talk about a tragic ending. You hate crime the lover? Mm hmm. Are you serious? Boys don't cry. I can't like. I can't really watch. That watch movie. It's so because it is so upsetting. Um, and Hollywood just loves to see queer people suffer. What is that? Why are they comfortable with queer people suffering? Well, I was actually going to ask this question to you: Is that do you feel like the emphasis on tragedy being like the main trope of queer films remains mm -hmm. a way to keep us othered from other people? If that makes sense? I, I would say a little bit. I think what's hard is because you have a lot of films that have uh, like heterosexual couples or just like have straight people as the leads. And they also are big tragedies. Like it's not just like, oh, only queer people can have tragic movies. It's right. just that most movies that star queer people end up being tragic. Mm -hmm. Um. And I think that sometimes, especially if you have like a straight director or a straight writer, even if their heart is in the right place, it doesn't always, they, they don't know how to navigate it. And they, they're like, oh, we, I want to show how terrible um, the situation is. And I get that. Like, that's great. Um, that's great. That's not what that's I'm great. Like, <laughs> that's great. You want to show trauma. That's great. But I right. don't think it's always necessary. Just record a day in, in my life. That's trauma. <laughs> Oh, it'd be so boring. Um, but if it, I think sometimes they want to create something that uh, will be provocative or interesting and it comes off as being like, I, just like trauma porn. 
Yeah. And it's like, like it's, not necessary. I was gonna say it's misguided because it's just like yeah. they're trying to humanize us by like showing like some really bad things that people go through. But then I watch mm-hmm. some of these, I'm just like, I, I didn't go through that. I was just like, that sucks for them, you know. But I, yeah. I never had a lover be hate crimes, you know? <laughs> right, so. right. And, and or it's even like um they show this in order to garner sympathy from uh like a hetero uh cis audience Mm -hmm. um where it's like you shouldn't have to show terrible things happening to queer people in order for heterosexuals to care uh Mm -hmm. kind of like um creating films like um well it's like it's like with the black experience too it's just like i was gonna say like 12 years a slave search 12 years a slave sort of situation um, but actually 12 years of a slave, I'm going to, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to say the help. The help is one of those movies where they try to show like, oh, the black experience, like, look how terrible it was for, for the black people back in the sixties. Um, but it's like, you can just, you, you, it was, why do you have to make a movie about it? Right. Um, at and least why do you have to make a white person the heroine? <laughs> Right. I'm like, at least from the perspective that it was made, it's not saying that these stories shouldn't be told. I'm saying that like, you need to think about like who you're making it for. I think that's the biggest thing is it across the board. People need to think like who, who's actually watching this. And I think a lot of time, whatever, unfortunately, whatever marginalized person is in the lead, whether it's like a woman, a person of color, uh, you know, an indigenous person, a, a black person, a queer person, whatever it might be, they don't, they're not making it for us. They're making it for a wider middle America audience so that it is digestible. And mm-hmm. let me ask you this. Do you think that there is any kind of positive to that, to making it more digestible to middle America? Or do you think it is just across the board harmful? Um, I mean, I do think that there are some middle of America films that are needed in order to like have like, you know, queer rights 101 classes. Um, Yeah, we talked about it. I said like the Danish girl is one that's like transgender rights 101. And I do think that sometimes if it works, I think it's okay. Like Love, Simon. Love, Simon is a good example where it's just like it's actually a happy film. It's a coming of age film but it's about a white suburbanite kid who just happens to be gay and falls in love, you know? Right. And it's just like, not, and it's just like, yeah, like I will say like love Simon's experiences are more of like what my life was like versus, you know, um, broke back mountain, but you know, you got to find a happy medium here, you know, or yeah, just make more queer films, just make more, (laughs) Make, make more queer films or just like have queer people making the films. Yes. Yeah. You, you know, like, I, I, that, that's, I think the biggest issue is they have a lot of white cis people, uh, and hetero people making queer content when it's like, mm-hmm. who's in the white writer's room for this? The writer's right. room. Hello. The writer's oh, room. The writer's there you go. room. Whoa! I just said <sighs> that. That is yeah. boom. Hollywood it's has like- a writer's room issue. It really does. It's like when you watch Pose and it's about you know, mm-hmm. black transgender uh, life in New York City. And you can tell which one's the Ryan Murphy episode and which one is the Janet which Mock ones. episode. <laughs> yep, amen. It's so yeah. true. And and <laughs> Ryan Murphy does have those moments where it's like, oh, it's so like melodramatic and over the top and great. Um, but when Janet Mock gets her hands on, on the show, you're like, okay, it feels authentic. It feels genuine. It feels um, watchable. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, even Pose has a lot of tragicness to it, but also a lot of happiness. So like, that's a happy medium, mm-hmm. that that show, because you have the really good highs and then you have um, sadness. Actually, let's just get into us here. So the whole point of this episode for Kyle and I was actually not to talk about just the tragedy of these oh. gay tragedy films, but we're actually making a, we curated a watch list for people to look into of some queer films that we think are either happy mediums or a nice counter offer to a queer tragic film. 
So yes. each of us chose three different films that we recommend to mm-hmm. you, our listening audience. And we'll give you ways of how you can watch that in your spare time here. Because let's be real, I think watching queer films will only make you better. Well, and I also think mm-hmm. that it's it's uh, just because you may not be queer doesn't mean you shouldn't watch queer films. Just like I'm white doesn't mean I shouldn't watch films about the Black experience. Uh, you should be diverse in your your viewing experiences that's how we get better as people that's and and honestly I say all the time every time I see a movie I'm like just show me something different I get so bored of seeing the same stuff over and over and over again so if Mm -hmm. I can find a filmmaker an artist or a writer whatever that is coming from a different viewpoint that I hadn't thought about before sign me up me I'm there for it me up yep agreed yeah all right So let's get started on our watch list here. Uh, Kyle, would you like to start? I would love to start. I would love to start. Uh, The first film I actually saw, uh, yeah, we we know I love, I want to start. I'm feeling, you know, I'm owning the Leo energy right now. You got to own the Leo energy sometimes. You got to. So the first film I saw I think, let me see. It came out in 2012. I think I saw it maybe two years afterwards. Um, and the film is Lawrence Anyways, directed by Xavier Dolan. Mm. Um, and if you don't know who Xavier Dolan is, he is like this French Canadian kind of wonderkins director. I believe he was like tw- in his early 20s. I was going to say 24, but I'm not exactly sure his age. He was in his early 20s when he made this movie. Um, and he's made lots of other movies. I was obsessed with him for a while. Um, like I love Heartbeats, Mommy, uh, and Lawrence anyways, like all of his films are just really good. And interesting that we brought up uh, Boy Erased because Xavier Dolan also is an actor and was in Boy Erased. And if you're like, I still don't know who this person is. If you've seen the Adele music video for Hello, he directed that. So, or I was gonna say, or if you've ever seen it part two, he's the, yes. the gay man who gets killed in the beginning. Oh, well, there's another gay tragedy. Look at that <laughs> yeah. way, to connect, uh, right. way to connect that. So, um, a lot of his movies <clears throat> do have a lot of tragicness in it. Um, and they tend to either have like queer characters or women at the forefront of uh, the storyline. So, Lawrence, anyways, is about this person who is in a relationship in like the late 80s with this uh, woman named Fred. Now, when I first saw this, I was a little confused because I was like, it's also all in subtitles French. So like I'm reading it and also watching it. So Fred is the girlfriend and Lawrence is who she is dating. Now they start as like a romantic couple. They're like super in love. Lawrence is like a teacher and a writer and they're just like really happy together. And then through like kind of exploring themselves Lawrence realizes I I guess not realizes but Lawrence is like I'm a woman and says to Fred I was never supposed to be a man I am a woman and Fred is still in love with Lawrence and accepts Lawrence for who she is Um, And the film kind of explores like Lawrence's transition to uh, be the woman that she is while also showing how Fred's relationship with Lawrence kind of changes. Um, The film does a really good job because it, there are sad moments. There are sad moments in it. Um, Cause like, how can you not be? Uh, But there's also really nice moments because you see that like, even though Lawrence is transitioning, uh physically the love that Lawrence and Fred have for each other really does not change and Mm -hmm. the power and pride that Lawrence gains from owning their transness um is like respected in a lot of ways from like their family and friends and like Lawrence's uh uh, kids that uh she teaches they're not like kids they're like teenagers but like students rather um so there's a it's it it does end happily. I won't say too much about what exactly happens at the end, but it ends on a high note. Um, and also it is styled so well. 
uh, Xavier Dolan, I believe, worked either was a stylist or worked with the stylist. And it's like very cool 80s fashions. Uh, the soundtrack is amazing. It is a bit longer. It's about two and a half hours long. Uh, but it, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. Um, and it's definitely worth it. I will say the biggest downside to it is the actor who plays Lawrence isn't a trans woman. Mm. Um so that I think is a whole nother discussion. Uh, and obviously there are plenty of trans uh, actors and performers who could do these roles. Um, this film was made in 2012. So I don't know if the trans discussion had made it to a <clears throat> mainstream level yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, Xavier Dolan was like in his early twenties when he made it. So I feel right. like our understandings of who you should be casting is different now. Um, at the same time, well, to be a fair, lot of the film is pre-transition, at least physical okay. transition of the of Lawrence. A lot of it is before Lawrence becomes who she is. Right. So I don't know. I guess every trans person is going to be different. No one is a monolith. So there right. may be a trans person would be like, oh, I would like detransition, not detransition, but you know what I mean. Like I would play another gender Mm -hmm. i mean again straight people do it all the time um so i feel like that's the only kind of touchy subject or touchy area for this film otherwise i really enjoyed it um it has like an 80 something percent on rotten tomatoes if you follow that uh yeah it's a really decent film have you seen it i don't know if you've seen it i have not seen seen it? it Um, I was going to say, to be fair, like this is also around the same time frame where, you know, you have Transparent with Jeffrey Tambor. We had Transamerica with Felicity Huffman, you know, uh, Hilary Swank with uh, Boys Don't Cry, where it's just like it was just understood at that time frame that you just had the cisgender actor play the transgender character. So I'm not saying Xavier Dolan wasn't you know, it's not like he made like a huge misfire because that was almost taught to people at that time frame. It's like, no, this is an okay thing to do. Um, right. So, right. and you know, I'm sure Xavier Dolan has learned. I'm sure if he made this film today, I'm sure that he probably wouldn't do the same thing. Um, but no, I have, I will admit something to you. I have never seen one of his films. <gasps> I know. <laughs> Josh. I know because I not trying to all the this. years we've known each other, all the years we've known each other, and I have said I love Xavier Dolan, and you went. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I should have. I should have known. You. You. Oh my God. Okay. So what's never, your excuse? Uh, no, I was gonna say uh, the excuse I made is that I've never had heard of him until I moved to Chicago. So I don't know, and I'm. That's fair. That's fair. I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of Iowans who know who Xavier Dolan is, but I didn't. And so I'm just going to blame it on my upbringing and just move on from there. And I will gladly add it to my Amazon Prime uh, watch list, especially because if I'm paying so much money for Amazon Prime, I might as well fucking watch it. <laughs> do it. Do it. It's great. And again, it's um, it's a little bit long. I will say that I remember when I watched it. I haven't watched it in years. Like, OK, so that was 2014. It's now 2021 i don't do math but it's been it's been a hot second Mm -hmm. um but when i watched it i definitely like paused it halfway through and like went ate something took a shower came back and i still was like okay i feel better um but yeah you definitely i mean i'm pro subtitles like people who hate subtitles like please just get over it because like i don't like judging people and i am judging you for being like i don't like subtitles stop it yeah that to I was yourself. Say, that's embarrassing that's embarrassing say, don't do that i was gonna say i it's unfortunate that people limit themselves to only watching english language films or films that you know they can understand uh-huh. because it's like there's so many great movies in the world some of my favorite movies are in a language that i do not know and yeah it doesn't deter me from watching the film at all. That's the thing. I don't understand how it deters them from watching it because maybe they, maybe they're illiterate. I don't know. Maybe it's like Kate Winslet and the reader moment. Like, (laughs) Oh, I hope it's not that. (laughs) I hope hope it's not an elderly Nazi illiterate woman. Oh dear Lord. Um, Can we just talk about the reader for, for a moment? Uh, Sure. 
Um, just side, complete side note. I remember renting that or like checking it out at my library when I was in Michigan and watching it. And I was like, oh, you see full frontal male dick in that. It yeah. was quite shock. It was shocking. I said, I said, what is that? <laughs> Wait, that was your first movie with full frontal male nudity? Um, it was either that or Borat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mine was Wild Things with Kevin Bacon. I've never seen that. Oh, it's such a great 90s. Wait, flick. Wild Things, Kevin Bacon is Denise. Matt is Dillon, Denise Richards. Denise Richards yes. Campbell. Okay, that that, yeah. that that was Denise Richards' like big breakout movie, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. But okeah, okay. Kevin Bacon Kevin steps Bacon. out of the sh- you got to see- <gasps> You got to see his bacon. You saw Kevin. I was going to say, Kevin Bacon, you got to see his bacon. Yep. He steps out of the shower and like you just see like a glimpse of his nicely uh, formed penis coming out of the shower. He's just like, oh. <laughs> a nicely formed penis as if it was like made on a potter's wheel. Um, Hey, ghost. Ghost? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, that took me back to dating days. There's been a lot of dating comments I've made this episode. I think the vaccine going has it. made me. Um, I, I. I'm ready for love. We'll do a dating uh, show episode. Bring me, bring me your your uh, best suitors for Kyle. There, there we go, go. viewers yeah. and listeners. Um, but All yeah, right. Lawrence. Anyways, fantastic film. Check it out, Amazon Prime right now. Um, and let us know what you think. If you think it's boring or not good, or you loved it, let us know. Yeah. Um, so Josh, what's your first? movie my first film is um from 1994 and it's called the adventures of priscilla queen of the desert uh director uh stefan elliott and it stars terrence stamp hugo weaving and a young guy pierce now i feel like priscilla queen of the desert is very a well-known film in the queer community um But for those of you who may not know what it is, um, it is an Australian film and it's about two drag queens and a transgender woman who got booked for a resort gig that's all the way across on the other side of Australia from where they're from. So they get on this tour bus, they name it Priscilla, and the whole point of the movie is their journey across the country, figuring out who they are, realizing what insecurities they have, interacting with, uh, you know, the people of Australia. I was going to be the Australianites. <laughs> <laughs> Interacting with kangaroos. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cor- they saw Courtney act. They said, hey. Um, no, but it, it's a great uh, film. It actually inspired the musical Priscilla, Queen of the Desert and also the American remake of Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think what was really nice about the film is that there's a lot of I don't I hate using this word but humanizing moments for these people that didn't end up in like them dying um there are some sad moments there are are, are you saying it it did a good job of humanizing drag queens no humanizing that's right drag queens are not humans yeah (laughs) they're superheroes there's yeah that's very true no humanizing I guess see I hate that term because it's just like you it's okay yeah but it's like you get to see I don't know more up-to-date insecurities of these people like there's there's a drag performer and you find out later in the movie a little bit of a spoiler is that you know he has a family and some Mm -hmm. of his insecurities are just like I don't know how my family's gonna take that I do drag now flash forward like you know, 30 years later, and we have drag contestants on RuPaul saying the exact same thing. But this is back in 1994. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, this is really interesting and new for the time frame. Um, Guy Pierce is hot. (laughs) You know, that's always good. Um, Guy Pierce is hot. He's hot. That's always a good thing. And I don't know, it's just like a really fun, brisk film. And it's just fun watching these drag queens perform in like the desert of Australia with these long ass gowns that flow through the wind and them interacting with the Aborigines. Um, It was really cool. That being said, it's kind of hard to find, unfortunately. Um, Have you heard of Pluto TV? No, I haven't. Okay. So Pluto TV is a free streaming service app that you can watch 
uh, films and television shows. But the downside is, is that um, it comes with commercials and they're not oh, okay. skippable. But the thing is, is that it's free content. Now, I know you can't really relate to this because you did not grow up with cable. So I'm sorry about that. But I didn't. I didn't yeah. grow up with cable. But like, I, I remember my family had like the Stars Channel and I, that's how I learned to watch a lot of movies is just- Ooh, you, Stars. The mm-hmm. Stars Fancy. Channel. I, I was- Dropping ri- names. Right. But I was just like, that's how I learned how to watch movies. Like I watched a lot of 90s films with commercials and I just sat through it and I was just like, oh, whatever. So if you're a millennial like me who went through that, I think you'll be fine. Priscilla, Queen of the Desert is a really fun film and- I think you should. Otherwise, if you don't like it, just rent it from iTunes or Apple TV. It's three bucks, the cost of a coffee, you know. Well, and I I know that like, so I've never seen Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, but I've seen like clips from it. I'm kidding. I've never seen a Xavier Dolan film, so whatever. (laughs) Well, in a weird way, I'm like, well, Xavier Dolan is kind of like not like, I feel like that's a little bit more obscure in the compared to Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, at least when it comes to like queer iconography. Sure. So like, I, I I know imagery from it. I know, like I've seen Tu Wong Fu. Um, so like, I get the gist of it and I've mm-hmm. seen clips from it. And I just think that like, I mean, anytime you have like drag performers, if it's going to be a good time, go full throttle good time with it. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, people should watch it, enjoy it, live it. Especially because now we're going into um, Drag Race Down Under. Mm-hmm. Crikey, I'm in the bush. Um, I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the kangaroos hit me. I don't know. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, get ready and uh, level your platypuses up and watch. Um, do you see did what they I have did plata- Do they have platypuses down there? Platypus, they're from Australia. Oh, are they? I thought they were like New Zealand yeah. creatures. I don't know. Well, New Zealand, Australia, the down under, mate. The down under. Yes. But anyway, Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. It's a fun film. I would recommend maybe watching it from the at the start of Pride because it's like a nice way to get oh, off. That's a to kick off Pride season. Yeah. Um, oh, you know what? That actually is a great way to transition it into my next film. Because you're saying it's a great way to kick off Pride season. And my next film I chose... Starts off Thanksgiving season? Yes. Yeah. No, it's it's called Pride. Oh! I've never seen that. So Pride came out in 2014. Um, and... The birth of Pride. <laughs> the, the birth of Pride. And yeah. it's like a, a like British film. Um, and it is about the early 80s like 1980s not 1880s the early 1980s uk margaret thatcher is prime minister um it's the beginning of the aids epidemic queer people don't have rights and there's a lot of like coal miners uh who are out of work and a lot of people struggling and it is about this guy who goes and he goes into like the small town that of and he's like gay and he's like not out, but then he meets a bunch of queer people and they form like a community together, right? Well, at the same time, there's like all these like old biddies who are like, oh, we don't like the gays until they realize actually they have a lot more in common because they all hate Margaret Thatcher. And it's a really sweet movie because like, I thought I wasn't going to like it. I thought it was going to be one of those things where I was like, this is stupid. Like, because I don't know if the trailer does it justice for how well made of a film it is, but it explores like, you know, queerness, community, all that good stuff. It's a good time. Um, and you can also find that on Amazon Prime. Jeff Bezos, I'm basically doing your job for you. Um, so I would say watch it. Millions I, of I, people will say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I saw it in theaters when it came out. I haven't seen it since, but I will say that even though it's like a good film, um, it's loosely based on a true story. Um, and you know, like at the end of movies where it's like everyone comes together and they're all happy and then it kind of has like a what happened to them afterwards. Mm-hmm. So like a couple of the characters do have kind of tragic endings. 
but uh the end of the film it does end on a happy note and um just shows like, like you know free to be you and me old people coming together who are coal miners gay young punks coming together uh At the end who of are the day, like, if you margaret all hate thatcher. margaret thatcher that's all that it cares about that's kind of the movie yeah. is they're kind of like wow we all hate margaret thatcher wow we're all people wow margaret thatcher fucking sucks um and margaret i'm so sorry to be saying these things to you sorry i was looking down um because she's in hell um but, <laughs> but yeah i would definitely say check out pride um i will a, admit a, i will i was gonna say i will admit when i saw the trailer for the film it seemed like a queer 101 type of film like and like a it is kinda, a little bit a, but at the time too i almost was like a poorly like produced one so i was just like eh, i'm gonna skip this one but a lot of people oh, yeah. really like it so it i'll say as someone who i'm a little snobby um about what i watch i would say that it is a, a really good movie that i um i think that like you could watch like with your mom like moms out there moms and dads out there that you know i mean my parents they'll watch anything so it's mm-hmm. not like I, I'm like, oh my God, you have to watch this queer content. It's more like I know that my dad is ro- watching Rachel Maddow and my mom is watching Call of the Midwife. So like, but I think that they also would like the movie Pride. I okay. would say if you got a parent out there or an aunt or uncle or even grandma or grandpa um, or anyone who you're like, there's movies like that might, that are queer that might be a little bit too much for them. They're like, whoa, this is a lot. It's a nice like, easy movie to watch i'll say that okay okay i'll, I'll like say that. that i'm trying i'm trying to remember where um i mean there's a market for everybody and if you have queer content that you want to watch with your family great. oh definitely and oh this is this is yeah bill bill nighy isn't it um who you may remember he's like in other british things i can't think <laughs> off the top of my head i can't think off the top of my head because like, well, it's like one of those things where like you see um you see Smell like British people, incident, right? Yes, yeah. She's like the main old lady. Yeah. Um, and again, like it's all these like British performers that you would see them, and they pop up in so many different P- BBC shows or movies. Or um, like there's also Andrew Scott, oh. the hot, <gasps> pri- yes, hot priest from Fleabag, isn't it? I love Andrew Scott. Yeah, Andrew Scott, isn't it? Um, Dominic West isn't it so oh, yeah, there's like British. other people yeah so there's like there's what about there's... that big eared guy isn't he in it too oh my god what is his name i it know who matter. this is right anyway i'm sure he's probably in it too i'm sure you know everybody... you got big ears my... it doesn't matter yeah um but speaking of a family friendly film that you could probably watch with your family that is queer content related i have another one for you um, and it is The Birdcage from 1996, directed by um, the icon Mike Nichols. You directed The Graduate, if you didn't know. Um, which I, I didn't know this. Oh, me too. Which I didn't know, but he also, this is also adapted from a French play from the 70s. Yeah. I did not yeah. know that. Uh, La Cage à Follet. I don't know if I said that right. Yeah. I, th- I but, think it's like La Cage à Follet. La cage for, that's, yeah. that, 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 that's like how it's spelled yeah you didn't know yeah. that Mm-mm, no i mean i don't know why i'm being like you didn't know that but um yeah isn't that kind yeah. of funny yeah but anyway um the birdcage stars it has like a huge <laughs> sorry cast list. but anyway yeah uh robin williams nathan lane diane weiss gene hackman hank azari christine barinsky like it's an all-star cast Alyssa basically Lockhart. Oh yeah, her. I forgot about her. Oh yeah, her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, her. <laughs> um, Oscar winner. Oscar winner. Yes. Con- oh, by the way, congratulations, her. Grammy winner of Song of the Year and uh, Academy Award for Song of the Year. Good yeah. for you. Good for her. Um, Anyway, so The Birdcage is about uh, Robin Williams and Nathan Lane as a happily married queer couple, um, Armand and Albert, and they are the owners of a drag club called The Birdcage. Um, and it's really well, it's a very well popular, isn't, aren't they in Miami? 
in the film. They're in Miami. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very popular drag bar. Um, And their son comes home and he announces them, hi, I'm marrying a a woman. And they're like, congratulations. We're so happy for you. And he's like, yeah, but she's the daughter of a really conservative politician. And Mm -hmm. they're like, oh, okay. And like, it's Gene Hackman. So it's like Mm -hmm. this great role for Gene Hackman to be a complete asshole. Oh yeah. Uh, Yeah. And then they're just, and then the son has the audacity to be like, can we invite them over to dinner to meet you guys? They're like, sure. And then even further, he's like, I want you guys to go back in the closet for this. And they're Mm -hmm. like, what? (laughs) And you know, at the time, like, sure, it plays up on, like, queer stereotypes where, like, Nathan Lane is super flamboyant and stuff like that. But it just, it's really funny to watch them struggle with having to go back into the closet. Like, these are things that people all struggle with, but it's told with, like, a little sense of humor. You mm-hmm. have Christine Berinsky, who makes this great cameo appearance at the end. Hank Azaria is naked throughout the entire film. It's really funny. Robin Williams, obviously, you know he steals the show in every single scene that he is in um and i think it's one of those essential viewings that i would say you should watch with your family at some point because it's it's just a really fun Mm -hmm. family film overall it's well made um fortunately it's also hard to find i don't know why i chose films that you can't really watch like easily but you think you're a hipster you're like oh you haven't seen it? Well, you haven't heard. Have you heard of the Baird Cage? Have you heard of La Cage à Folle? <laughs> You're so but, excited now that you know how to say it. I know. I don't, I don't even like, know if I'm saying it right, but yeah. I know. I'm like, La Cage à Folle. <laughs> You're like, The Cage à Folle. Yeah. But yeah. it is on Pluto TV for free. It's also on Tubi for free. Um, you just have to sit through commercials, but it's a short film. It's not like it's that long. Um, yeah. Otherwise, like I said, put your money where your mouth is and you can rent it from iTunes, Apple TV, or Amazon Prime. Remember when just you used to rent it. movies? Yeah. Oh, it's I miss going different. to the, the movie rental store. I do miss that. Right. And then like you, yeah, know, the, and then the, you walk past the adult section and you see like the curtain, like, and you're just like, what's in there? Like the dark um, place. <laughs> Our, our movie rental did not have that. It was like a family video that had like Sumer Nintendo games and N64 games and the VHS. You had a family, you had a family video? Oh, yeah. Oh, I love family and video. I loved family video. And unfortunately, they closed like two years ago, uh, the one that was by my mom's. And before they closed, they were like, they were trying to transition into come and rent DVDs. Um but it became like it went from like rent dvds to rent dvds we also have cbd to (laughs) cbd and maybe rent a movie to just cbd but it was still considered a family video but they were only advertising c it was like cbd sold here and (laughs) the funniest thing i bring the family bring the family get some cbd and watch a movie yeah, yeah. Right. i love the birdcage i think the birdcage is one of those movies like you said an essential viewing um nathan lane is it's my favorite thing that he's ever done um sorry timon sorry mouse hunt i love those the producers <laughs> the producers but it is my favorite thing he is so funny in it and it's so dramatic and it really does just give you you know like when you watch those movies and you like get done and you have like a little bit of goosebumps like you got the goosies and you have like a little bit of chills and you feel like warm in your like tummy Mm -hmm. that's the birdcage like you just feel good afterwards you're like that was really solid yeah I was gonna say it has like this very um emotionally manipulative moments where like you like somehow halfway through the movie like when things are going bad like a musical performance happens or like someone has like this great monologue or Robin Williams does this great skit and you're just like oh things are good in this world it do- and- it does remind me um like of old Hollywood like kind of those madcap like uh some like it hot it reminds mm-hmm. me a little bit of that in, in moments where it's just classic like screwball Goofiness. comedy yeah screwball comedy it really is but then you have like family at the heart of it Mm-hmm. And it's done by these great performers. It's so well done. I love The Birdcage. I love Me too. it. Yeah. So for those of you who have never seen The Birdcage, definitely add it to your list, um, especially for people who are fans of any of the actors that we talked about. I think it showcases all their talents really well. Um, and yeah. 
go see yeah. it. And what's nice, it's nice too, because Robin Williams, like, so Robin Williams had done um, Mrs. Doubtfire like a few years before doing the Birdcage. So like his role, he's more of like the straight man um, mm -hmm. in, in, in the coupling of him and, and Nathan Lane are supposed to be a couple. And Nathan Lane is like over the top and flamboyant. And then you have Robin Williams, who's like a little bit more serious and he does such a good job. It's like nice to see variety coming from people who you're like, oh, you're just goofy. No, right. he like, he's great, but he yeah. does have a more serious tone to it. It's nice. Also, he looks that, really good. He looks really good. He does. He looks fantastic. He looks really hot in that movie. Also, the year yeah, after he that, does. he does uh, Goodwill Hunting. So like, we love to see variety. A, variety, a variety show queen. So yep. Roller coaster of acting skills. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We love it. All right. What is your third and final film to recommend so, for these? These lovely people. Uh, my third and final film to recommend is kind of a more recent film. Uh, and I tried to do everything from like uh, Hollywood, not just Hollywood, but kind of like a classic narrative standpoint. But I got to say, I love documentaries and this documentary works really well so it's the movie the movie documentary moving parts uh mm. which if you are a fan of drag race you probably have you probably know this uh it came out in 2019 and it follows the career and personal life of trixie mattel who won all stars three of rupaul's drag race um and kind of what goes on behind the scenes because as trixie's career starts taking off you know she has her music she has uh a tour coming up she has comedy shows she's on rupaul's drag race all stars three she has all these things a tv show her personal life is kind of suffering you see her um one of her best friends and collaborator katya who's also a drag queen kind of turn on her because she's have she has a a well, mental break mm -hmm. um and can't really function and you see how dynamics change and you see kind of like the person behind the drag persona um and it ends on such like a warm cuddly note that it, and it, it puts you through the ringer you're like oh my god these t these sad things are happening or like you know there's a scene where trixie's having to pay her her mom's bills and it's just it's sad and you and and I think it's like the reality of she has this big show persona that everyone knows who Trixie is, but it's like in reality, she's like having to pay her mom's bills. And she, you know, she said that her, her family doesn't see her perform often and her best friend's having a mental breakdown and hates her. And, you know, it's like all these things happening, um, mm -hmm. but it does end on a very high note. And if you haven't seen it yet and would, <laughs> and if you would like to see it, it is on Netflix right now. It's like 90 minutes long. It's very enjoyable. And I would even say that you don't have to be a fan of Drag Race to watch the film. It's still a really decent documentary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I remember not liking Trixie Mattel for a while because there was a time where she was very um, hyped, like in the sense that like she just won. Sure. All Stars 3, you know, she had, uh, but then it turned into the Trixie and Katya show, you know, DragCon was basically that you're like dedicated to her. So it's just like, oh my God, yeah. I was just like, I was like, oh, I get it. Like Trixie's good, but like, I don't care and blah, blah, blah. But then when I watched the documentary, I was just like, oh yeah, this is a kid from Milwaukee. Like, you know, or was yeah. it Milwaukee? Yeah. Um, well, you know, no, yeah, north of Milwaukee is where Trixie grew up, and Milwaukee is kind of where she went when when she got older and was going to college and things like that. But I I don't know. It's it she she didn't grow up with money. There was right. child abuse. There was you know poverty happening. Hey, bald bald people need love too. Yeah. Or you become a drag queen and just put a wig on it. Hello, unless you're exactly. in, unless you're on Gina. And, uh, and you just rock the bald. Why not? Right, right. No, I I remember really liking um, a step in a way being like eating my words. I was just like, oh, Trixie Mattel is good. I was just like, I'm being a yeah. little too harsh on someone for no reason. Um, but yeah, I was on Netflix. Surprise, surprise. I... <laughs> but I was on Netflix, or it's on Netflix. I remember watching it randomly on like a Tuesday night and it was like super easy to get through. 
um yeah just watch it one day I yeah and yeah like Kyle said you don't really need to know much about Drag Race because Trixie is famous enough as it is where you probably have recognized her before without Drag Race so Mm -hmm. and even like for me I love watching documentaries that kind of focus on entertainers or people in the spotlight or things like that um and this definitely is very much like you know behind the mask who is the person behind the Trixie Mattel persona um and it's nice plus you get a lot of Trixie's kind of folky music that she plays throughout the movie and Mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for folk music so it's it's very good and decent she's a talented singer I will say that and plus like if like if you're into like the music documentaries like if you could sit through all of Demi Lovato's Mm -hmm. like 18 documentaries that she has or like Justin Bieber's five documentaries that he has like it fits right into like that type of narrative that they make and if you have a Hulu subscription or you're uh you know using someone else's thank you Josh uh and you watch moving parts on Netflix and you're like oh I I've never seen Trixie Mattel you can head over to Hulu because they just put All Stars 3 on there which she spoiler alert wins um, yeah. So you can see her in action and, uh, you know, kind of make the connections. Or you go to her YouTube and you can look at all of her YouTube videos. Right. I was she just say, put out her- one today. She's doing makeup. And yeah, it's it's fun. It's a good time. It is. It's a great time. And we salute the Miss Trixie Metal. Um, so I ha- I'm going to end on a foreign film. It's oh from- Yeah, it's from Brazil. Um, do you know what it is? Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. What is it? Do what you know it? Diane? <laughs> do you know it, Diane? Do you? do you? Do you? It's um the 2014 film The Way He Looks. Oh. Yeah. Yes. And directed by Daniel uh R- Ribeiro. Um, and it's adapted from a short film that he made in 2010 mm-hmm. um called I Do Not Want to Go Back Alone. So mm-hmm. I feel like, I don't know, maybe this is just me, but I do feel like a lot of really great LGBTQ films um, that were made like a decade ago were not from the US. Like you were like watching like French Canadian films, like you said with Xavier Dolan Mm -hmm. or watching like, Mm -hmm. um, you know, this Portuguese film, UK, whatever. Um, It's about a teenager named Leonardo who is blind. Um, and he's trying to gain some independence in his life because he feels like he doesn't have a spot in this world, especially mm-hmm. coming from a home whose parents, they love him to death, but they are really overprotective of him and they feel like he can't function very well as a blind person. And that is frustrating, especially for someone who is 15 and wanting to be their own person. Um, so at first you're watching him with his friend, I think her name is Giovanna. Um, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but... She tries to help him, you know, they're best friends, but he's still like, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not getting, I don't, nothing's fulfilling me. Then mm. the hot new kid comes in and then always the hot new kid. It's the always hot new, the hot new kid. The hot new kid comes in and adventures begin. And I will say it's not like the most original story in the world. I mean, sure. Mm-hmm. Like they added the fact that, you know, he has a disability. So that adds another narrative to it but it definitely is one of those like teen romance dramas where you're just like the hot new kid comes to school and you're just like we're here for a ride um but i hope so well uh. (laughs) yeah no i was like oh well a ride on the back of his bike which is a good plot point in the film oh yeah yeah um I don't know. I'm a sucker for those types of movies. I don't know. Maybe it's just living out a fantasy that I never got in my high school where I was attracted to the hot new kid. Um, but you could watch it on Amazon Prime. Um, it does have subtitles. So don't worry. You can read and watch at the same time. And I don't know. With, you know, with Xavier Dolan and the way he looks, I feel like we're expanding, hopefully, your realm of like what good movies are if that makes sense. Oh, I hope so. And I feel like there's so many foreign films that we could talk about. Um, I mean, if if Pedro Omodovar is one of my favorite directors. Um, and so if you, if you will read the subtitles, I would say anything from his catalog is typically queer. And if not, 
a queer lead, there will be queer themes in it. Mm -hmm. Um, So check out anything from Pedro Omodovar. Um, I know there's a lot of like up and coming uh, films. Like I know there was that movie Rafiki from Africa. Mm -hmm. Oh, where was it in Africa? I, I, I wasn't prepared to talk about all of these, but Rafiki came out and it was like a lesbian movie. Um, there, there's tons of stuff out there. Um, what is it? Oh, the hand, is it the handmaid? The handmaiden. handmaiden. The South Korean handmaiden. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have, Oh, I forgot to add that to my list. I should have done that one. That would have been good. It's like maybe, yeah, but there's like, uh, there's all these, uh, movies that are not, from the United States that are also fantastic queer films um, mm-hmm. and that end on, you know, happy notes uh, yeah. and that are these gay tragedies. Um, we already are tragedies as it is. We don't need a, like a movie to emphasize it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Get Shangela in here again. Hallelujah. Because I don't remember right. the last time I saw her. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So we just wanted to curate this watch list for people to check it out, see if they're interested in it. You know, we're still we're still kind of quarantining, so you still have time to watch movies if you'd like. And I don't know. No one says us- it just because you know the CDC says you can go outside with a mask. That doesn't mean that you have to leave your house. You can still stay in your house in your pajamas watching movies. Not that I'm doing that right now. Hmm. Not that I don't have any pants on underneath this. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's not so that we, kind of show. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we will. So we will feature these films and where to watch them in our post. Um, so make sure to follow us on social media. Kyle, where can people find us? You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Fear the Queer Podcast. You can also uh, check us out on the YouTube's uh, at Fear the Queer Podcast. Um, mm-hmm. We are also on Spotify, SoundCloud, and Apple Podcasts. Go ahead and hit mm-hmm. like and rate us and write a cute little review saying, we love you guys, or good job, or okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, we appreciate all of those. What if people want to contact us, Josh? If people want to contact us, you want to slide right into our DMs, especially on Instagram. Mm-hmm. That's where we are most active mm-hmm. here. Just, you know, hit that like button on our or no what is that the dm button and just be like hi how are you you can hit the like button too that's That's true nice that's true um and then you can also contact us on facebook i think i think we get those messages but the place that we do the place that we do not get those messages is our gmail account so do not email us we are still trying to figure out how to open a new tab in gmail um we'll get how to do you eventually. do this yeah how do you do that to be fair it took me a while to figure out my gmail today um and i am a fully functioning uh gmail user um, yeah we almost so... started this episode an hour late today because Kyle it was well it was, it was it was what like a half an hour later yeah um yeah i could not get my gmail open i don't know if that's an app issue or a computer issue um or kyle but issue. it was an issue yeah it could be a Kyle issue. But as always, I'm Josh. And I'm Kyle. And this is Chromatica. Hi, Chromatica. And we're Fear the Queer. Fear the Queer. Bye. Bye. I want your stupid love. Make it sing. Make it sing. <laughs>